also from Baltimore. That's a fact what? about me. Shout out to Baltimore. Um, which is cool. I found that um, when you go to DC a lot and you're from Baltimore, some people in DC have silly questions about Baltimore. Right. Um, probably number one being Baltimore. Is it like The Wire? <laughs> ah, which is like, first off, I wouldn't know. Um, second off, that's such a funny thing. You know what I mean? Like. The Wire, obviously, an HBO show, not a documentary, set in Baltimore about drugs, crime, crooked cops, and you're like, okay, that happens here some of the time, to a lot of the time. But Baltimore also has so much to offer, right? It's also like Step Up. <laughs> or Step Up to Streets. <laughs> Both of those films, well, Step Up, if you remember, of course, is a dance film, also set in Baltimore where a young white man introduces a young white woman to hip hop. And that's something that happens in Baltimore every day. It's actually very serious out here. It's cool. Anything you want? I, um, so for me personally, I was raised very religious, so I did not have sex until I was 19 years old. And I decided that I was ready to have sex because I took a BuzzFeed quiz. Said, Are you ready to have sex? And it said yes. It was not correct. Um, I will say, I, because I was so religious, I never watched porn. Um, up until that point, so the only time I had ever seen a penis was in a biology textbook. And they are so different when they're not cut in half. <laughs> what am I looking at? Where is your cowper's gland? <laughs> Vaz deference. This is not helping. Um, <laughs> is cool. I, um, I don't only date men, obviously. I am here because I'm queer. <laughs> Which is cool. It's the kind of thing. So I don't know if you can tell a femme. I present more femininely. And it was the kind of thing where, again, being very religious growing up, I basically was like, oh, I am going to uh, stay in the closet, date men, get married, have kids, and die. That was my plan. I was like, this is going to be great. It's going to work out. I can do this. And then I met Rachel, and two weeks later, I had a shaved head and she was my barber, so, <laughs> all right, here, here we go, it's cool, we're doing this. Um, it's been, it's been fun. Um, I've been reflecting as well, while I was raised really religious, I also was raised in some kind of weird ways, too. Like, I was thinking back on my childhood, and I remembered that when I turned eight years old, my dad bought me an encyclopedia of vampires that was over 400 pages long. <laughs> And instead of eating lunch in third grade, I would just bring that to school and read it. And I'm like, why did no one intervene? Like, clearly something is wrong. Like, we need to stop this. But no one, no one stepped in. Um, and I'm just kind of like, you know, he wonders why I am the way I am. But I'm like, I don't know how you expect an eight-year-old to read about Elizabeth Bathory, a 17th century Hungarian countess famous for bathing in the blood of virgins and expect me to be like not obsessed with true crime and also not kind of gay like it just doesn't add up she sounded really hot um it's just some tough tough stuff for me i um i had a breakup a little while ago which thank you <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was tough um but a breakup's the kind of thing that makes you sort of come back to center again, reconsider things in your life. So I was thinking, and I was just like, you know, I realized that um, my biggest fear is being alone. Thank you, hold your applause. <laughs> my biggest fear is being alone. My second biggest fear is getting possessed by demons. But that used to be number one. So in some ways, this is progress. <laughs> afraid of something that's real and currently happening. Um, and it's the kind of thing, again, you come back to center, you're like, okay, getting possessed by demons would definitely suck, but at least then I wouldn't just have to listen to my thoughts all the time. <laughs> Might be nice to get a little company around here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's cool. And you know, getting possessed by demons has hidden benefits, right? Things that people don't talk about, but I've always wanted to speak another language fluently, for example. And getting possessed is like the Rosetta Stone, you know? You're gonna be like, speaking languages people in this dimension don't even know. It's really cool. Um, I've also wanted to be more athletic, and nothing's more athletic than doing backflips on the ceiling. So, I feel like I could really impress a date. They'd be like, I wish her head would stop spinning around, but the form is impeccable. So. <laughs> really feeling good about it. It's good, it's good. 
love it. They're so, so much fun, so much to love. I was on Tinder for a while. My bio on Tinder is if you die in the game, you die in real life. <laughs> Which is a fun, flirty way to remind people what the stakes are for women. <laughs> Who date men, especially. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, one of those things where you're like, I love having half of the dates I go on just be like, are you the one who's gonna murder me? <laughs> I don't want to waste my time. <laughs> looking for something serious. <laughs> Amateurs need not apply. <laughs> it's good. It's good, though. We're working it. I'm working on it. I, um, I do have... <laughs> In my post-breakup, I'm working things out. I have a couple of questions. Number one being, um, are crystals just Pokemon for white women? <laughs> I think they might be, just because they come in so many colors, and they have all these different powers, and they're so cute. I want to collect them all. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have like found and lost crystals and just been like, literally, what am I doing with my life? I've just been like, oh, they were in the pocket of this jacket. I see. <laughs> have to have them on me at all times. <laughs> Got a couple with me here tonight. Um, one is for power, which I always need. Another, quartz for clarity. So <laughs> really, eye of the tiger right here. It's tiger's eye. That's the one for power. Um, <laughs> really working on it. It's good. It's great. I love it. <laughs> if I say that enough times, do you believe me? <laughs> Just wondering. Asking for a friend. I'm my own friend now. <laughs> oh, it's good. I actually, so my main, my jobs that I do outside of comedy, the ones that pay the bills, I work with children, um, which is cool. I work at a school. I've had a child recently start telling me, I'm a first grader, that we are going to move into a house together. <laughs> which is fun. I don't really know what he thinks the relationship is going to be. Like, I don't know if he thinks that, like, we're getting married or if I'm just going to be his teacher who lives at his house. <laughs> when I'm a child. What wonder it holds. But, <laughs> on the other hand, he's trying to provide for me more than anyone I've ever dated. So, <laughs> I'm like, listen, you know? He told me it's going to be a fancy house. He also told me it's going to be a series of tunnels under the school, so oh we'll see how this turns out. Uh, <laughs> he also has like a better sense of time than most people I've ever dated. Like, he's like, look, I know I told you this was going to happen by my birthday, but it might not be until I'm 12, which is twice as old as he is right now. So, like, little guy's got a six-year plan. Tough to find out here. <laughs> got some vision. I like it. <laughs> He also, I'm an art teacher, so he's been doing this thing where I will like make a piece of artwork to show the kids what we're doing, right? And he'll be like, wow, that's really good. We're gonna hang it up in the house. And I'm like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> <Leave> me alone. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten really bad. It's gotten bad. He uh, started to become a problem with the other students, right? Because they're like, they started making fun of him. They're like, you love Miss Norman. You want to marry Miss Norman. And I'm like, look, first off, chill. Second off, no one here is getting married, right? And he's like, well, we're not old enough yet. Like, mm, you're not old enough yet. <laughs> I'm technically of marrying it, but I'm not gonna marry someone 20 years younger than me. And he was like, didn't you just turn 25? I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, I'm six, and I don't know math that well, but <laughs> I know that that's not 20, so I'm engaged. Um, just gonna, I'm not gonna marry a six-year-old. I actually like had a thing where I said that, like I was like, I'm not actually gonna marry a six-year-old, and someone was like, aw, and I'm like, mm, wrong response. <laughs> I'm gonna end on this, which is just to say that um, my other job that I work at, I also work in a museum, um, and a museum where we have a mummy, right? Which is exciting also weird. Like, it's a weird thing to have to explain to children. They're like, is that a real dead body? And you're like, yeah, weird that it's in a box, right? Weird that we have it. Weird that we won't give it back to Egypt. <laughs> no one else is doing that, so I guess we've all decided it's cool. Um, but I was one child who knew more about mummies than most kids. He interrupted me to say, those are the jars for the guts, which is correct. They were the canopic jars. Of course, you have to take all of the internal organs out of the mummy in order to dry it out properly. They put them in the little jars with the different heads. You know what I'm talking about. I was like, that's correct. I started talking about canopic jars, and he was like, okay, interrupt me again to say, is a penis a gut? Is a penis a gut? Quick succession of things that this child wants to say, wants to know about. Those are the jars for the guts? Yes. 
is a penis a gut? No, a penis is not a gut. And I told him that. And then he said something that haunts me to this very day. And he said, I wish it was. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Thank you, I've been listening.